to be the man. You got to beat the man. This is my yard now. I will fight anyone and everyone. Here he comes. Where is he? Cactus Jack. Your arms are just too short to box with God. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Future Heels podcast. We are live from Wrestling Has a Tomorrow. What's the name of the show? What? What's the name of the show? Oh, the actual name of the show. <laughs> yes. What is left to give? Awesome. We are live from the Curse River Armory. There are a bunch of dudes in the ring, a bunch of awesome athletes that we're going to be seeing later. We're going to be interviewing a lot of these guys. Uh, I'm really excited. My name is Jacob Best in the Realm Hotter. And I'm Brian, Brian Man Peacock. I think you guys know that at this point, though. But we're, we're reminding you. We're very excited about this. They're testing music now. You might be able to, you could probably hear that. I'm sure. So, there's props over there. I, I don't know what that is. That I think looks, that's the merch table. That's the merch table. That's not props. Then. That just looks weird. Uh, we're very excited to bring you guys this show. It's going to be on YouTube on Wrestling Has It Tomorrow. It'll probably be on the Future Villains website and YouTube. So keep an eye out for it. But stay tuned. We're going to have a bunch of interviews. And we're going to have a live commentary track. So thank you for joining us from this very special show on May 13th, 2017. Stay tuned to the Future Heels podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the very relaxed Future Heels podcast. <laughs> it's a very chillaxed day here. My name is Jacob Best, the Realm Hotter. I'm... Brian, Bryman, Peacock. I forgot your name there for a second. <laughs> so that's how relaxed we are right now. And there, there's we're not influenced by anything except no. for possibly Mountain Dew. The the weather. Oh Yesterday yeah. was rainy. Today it's pretty cloudy. I'm not sure if it's rain. I haven't been outside yet today. It's also dark in here. Yeah, it's dark. I, I usually try to keep my house dark. Um, Why is it so dark? Home here? alone this I'm gonna weekend. I'm going to fix that. No, we don't need light. We do need light. I don't. But that's how that's how my favorite show records their show, is in the dark. Now now it's too bright. No, now it's good. Now I can see, and it's like I I should vacuum because <laughs> we're recording in my living room this time. Oh, okay, let me get back in my comfortable spot. This is much better. Now I don't feel like I'm gonna fall asleep. I couldn't figure out all day. Well, I, I don't know. It's just because I've been tired. That was because that light was off. Yeah, I. I I do sit in the dark. Can you tell when you fill her? Can you? <laughs> so there isn't it's a lot. Like, it's like McDonald's in here, just full of filler. Yeah, just full of crap. That's what you're in for today, guys. <laughs> well, we got a couple interesting things to talk about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've been busy. I've been on a Dalton Castle Tommy in kick this entire weekend. Yeah, that you have. We have watched a lot of that. And a little sprinkle of Sammy Callahan in there, too. Right. We found a new interesting YouTube channel. Yeah. Which um, I'll bring up the name so we know, so we can talk about that. Yeah. We went to an indie show yesterday for uh, Mr. Chris Braddock that you listened to last week. Wrestling has it tomorrow. And we'll talk a bit about that. But uh, let's, just, let's just start with Raw and SmackDown. I mean, the storylines got furthered. Kalisto got squashed. Roman attacked Braun. You know, the same thing that's been happening. Yeah. Week after week. Uh, NXT was good. So interesting interviews. Def- <laughs> definitely. The uh, Nikki Cross interview was very, very good. Yeah. The uh, Ruby Wright interview was really cool. Yeah. Um, sucks Ember is out with a shoulder injury. Stuff happens. And, um... Really cool main event on NXT. Uh, Roddy Hideo. and yeah. Hideo, yeah. Uh, and the two, I watched 205 Live. I, I try to watch 205 Live because, one, I feel like a lot of people don't. Don't <laughs> and, say that because then you're going to justify the idiot from the, the indie show. Well, I also, like, I've, I'm, he's not the only person I've heard it from, but I, there's no reason not to watch it unless you don't have the network. And then, I would, I'd imagine if you're listening to us right now, you probably have the network, or you have someone's password for the network. Yeah. Um, I mean, really, if you're listening to us, you probably have it. So there's really no reason not to watch 205 Live. It, you don't have to watch it right away. I usually watch all the wrestling from the week 
on Fridays. Yeah, it's Thursdays funny. You've and been the one that's become the guy that watches everything. Because I want to make sure I know what we're talking about. Oh, I guess I don't. <laughs> and I can't remember. <laughs> I, I, mean, I watch most of it. Yeah, I mean, I don't remember most of it because most of it's not that memorable. Yeah, that's true. But I'll put it on. Usually I have to wait till everyone else is in bed or no one else really cares. But that's okay. <laughs> but I do like why I do go out of my way to make sure that I do watch NXT and 205. Yeah. Like I, I, I'm usually reminded of 205 while watching SmackDown. I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta, I want to go make sure I watch that. Right. Um, it's fun. I really like it. But yeah, nothing really happened on Raw and SmackDown. Nothing really worth mentioning, I don't think. No, I mean, it's... The six-man tag was cool. That was pretty neat. I mean, there was some cool stuff. It was worth watching, but... Yeah, it was just a, a filler week. Just like this is a filler podcast. Uh, I don't know. Well, well the sorry. beginning was filler. Yeah, the beginning was filler. Every uh, podcast is filler. Typically. Yeah, yeah we're filling your time exactly. or something. You're Welcome. probably working or... Not working. I We're don't know. filling you full of podcasts. And you're welcome. That's a good name for a podcast. <laughs> you can have that one, audience. Uh, actually, audio copyright, copyright, no, you can't. It's ours. <laughs> so uh, you're pulling up here. Uh, you're going to have to mute that. Mute it, that. It's muted. Okay. Uh, this guy we've discovered on YouTube. Yeah, we're gonna, we're claiming this discovery. Yeah, uh, we've discovered him. So you, Well, you've discovered so, him because you showed me. Right, so, Kenny Johnson, you are very welcome that I have discovered you. You're welcome. Now, the WWE will watch your documentaries because they listen to our show. That's right. Because of Shazara. And uh, maybe they'll get you on their documentary team, which I'm sure they have. New uh, Finn Balor documentary comes out tomorrow. Oh, that's right. I, you know, I'm not, I don't think I've ever watched any of the 24th. Really? Yeah. Those are so good. By the time I watched and got caught up for the week, it's like, it's okay, it's time to do the podcast. Yeah, like, and we started watching Breaking Ground last night. Yeah, and that's okay. I don't think I'm going to watch any more of it. You should watch a couple more episodes. I think I would have liked it, like, when that came out, is that what was happening at the time? What do you mean? Was it, like, relative, or was, like, because Baron Corbin's on there, like, oh, I hope I make it, and now he's... Doing well, what he's doing. Breaking Ground when it was coming out was still a bit behind. Well, I know it's going to be a little behind, but it wasn't like years behind or like no. less than a year behind. I think less than a year behind. Okay, I, I so I probably would have watched it then. Yeah. Because honestly, the first time I saw Baron Corbin, I was like, oh, they grabbed someone out of the audience. Like, <laughs> I, like he looked like someone from around here. Yeah, you should give it a couple more episodes. Maybe I think there's so many other things I'd rather watch on there. Like yeah. the uh, those 24. show, twenty four. Yeah, I do want to see some of those. There's new table for three coming out. Uh, bring it to the table. Bring which one is the one that's like part of the interruption? Oh, bring it to the table. That's the one I want to watch. Yeah. Although I really I got super super excited when I saw that, and I was like, well, it's still like they can't really say what they want to say. You know, bullshit. Really? Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I'm going to give it a try, but I would much rather see that type of show with, like... Like, off the network? Off the network, we're, like, shoot style. It's very shoot style. Is it? Well, I'll, I'll watch it. I'll, I'll give it a shot. It, it's surprising the shit they say on there. Okay. Well, anyway, back to the documentary guy. Um... Yeah, he's got a YouTube channel. It's full of documentaries. Very, very, very well-made documentaries. Very well. Uh, at least the wrestling ones. Because I watched, I watched more than you did. I watched 10, 15 of them, maybe. Wow. And some of them are short, a uh, couple minutes long. Especially, like, the Evolved documentaries. Yeah, they're, which they're is actually like... Evolved... Uh, they made those. Like they had, I think they hired him. Yeah, and they're they're more like promos than documentaries. Right. But then he's got some that are like 10, 15, some that are half an hour. I don't know if any are much longer than that. Uh, it didn't look like it. But he's got a lot about Johnny Gargano, and I'm going to watch those. 
And honestly, I'm not his biggest fan. Don't get me wrong, he's great. Like, Johnny Wrestling is Johnny Wrestling. But for some reason, like, he, he doesn't necessarily do it for me. Sure. And, I mean, but I, I'll watch his matches. He has great matches. But I don't think he would ever be, like, my favorite. But I'm still going to watch the documentaries because I just love documentaries, too. Do you so. not really care for the... Well, I mean, you're a Daniel Bryan fan. Oh, yeah. Big time. I mean, he's got that same kind of, like, I just love wrestling kind of character. Yeah. Which I think too many guys have now. Yeah, it could be. Between Sami Zayn, uh, Tommaso, and Johnny, and Daniel Bryan, and I Zack think... Ryder, and... <laughs> Yeah, there, there's 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 a few. Yeah. Um, the reason I think I like Tommaso so much is one, he's got a cooler name, and uh, uh, he looks just like this guy I know. <laughs> he he looks like one of the guys that uh, basically took over my LARPing unit. Verano, I don't know if you've met him. Oh, no, I guess not. But while well, well, while we're on this topic, I found a oh Wyatt. Okay promo video with the other guy who took over the LARP unit. Uh, he was in the promo video for the Wyatts because they filmed it in Brooksville, which we're not far from. And it was someone, I don't know who it was because I don't think I found the entire video. Someone walking around with a camera and they pull up to these two guys in like the back of a truck or something. They're working on something and uh bruce the guy in the video who i found comments was like is that zz from tough enough or whoever that zz is yeah his name? Uh, i had to be like no guys i know him <laughs> he's not zz <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's not nearly as lazy <laughs> no and he will beat your ass with a red that's for sure none of you get that if you do please comment below because thumbs up for that no. um <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was pretty cool because I heard about it and I was like, okay, yeah, may maybe. I didn't want to disbelieve it, but now that I saw it, I'm like, well, that's really cool. Bruce really was in a Wyatt promo. Yeah, yeah, it's the promo that came out a while back, and like I said, I don't think there was any payoff to it. Yeah, I don't it was know. like a first person kind of thing, and, and they, yeah, and Luke Harper is like walks them through the house to meet yeah. Ray. And, I don't know, and then, like, the intro started, at least in the video I saw. Yeah, and that was a re-edit. Yeah, and then it jumped to, like, some video game or something. But, uh, yeah, I thought that was really cool. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, that was fun. And the, the Wyatts, their their family is legitimately from Brooksville. Right, uh, Bow and Bray. Yeah, and uh, then I would assume IRS. So yes. That's, that's their father. Yep. I think he lives in Brooksville. Yep. So, I wonder if they own that property and filmed that on. That'd be interesting. No. No? I think that's been, like, debunked now. Oh, okay. Like, people found that house. They also found the house from the House of Horrors. Oh, really? It's up for sale. <laughs> really? Because that house, really, I thought that house was in a soundstage. Nope. It's a house. Okay. Because at, in Universal, um, a few years ago, they had, at Halloween Horror Nights, there was a house that looked very very similar to that right in one of their sound stages where the ha the haunted house was and you could go in there and i was like how funny would it be if that was the actual house right. and they filmed in it because it looked it looked a lot like it but yeah i thought that was filmed in a sound stage it didn't even look like well i think uh reddit or twitter so we on reddit or twitter found it and oh okay yeah because it was pitch black but it was like six thirty. In the yeah. afternoon in California. So, <laughs> that's the yeah. other reason I thought it was a soundstage. They could have planned that better. <laughs> yeah. They talked about that to bring it to the table. Oh, do they really? Yeah. Ah, okay. They oh, talked okay. about why it was good and why it was really bad. Okay. I, I'm, I want to see it now. I'll watch it. Especially that, because I want to know. I want to know what people think. Yeah, look up Kenny Johnson on YouTube. It's yeah. just very insightful. It's not... See... I really thought it was going to be, like, clips of matches put together and him just kind of interviewing people. No, this guy's got, like, backstage access to these guys. Yeah. Uh, my two favorite were, um, my the first one I came across, and I was like, ooh, this sounds really cool. What is this? It was titled, They Came for Stiff, a Sammy Callahan documentary. 
Sammy Callahan slash Solomon Crow documentary. I was like, ooh, Sammy Callahan is a badass, and I love documentaries. What is this about? And I love some stiff wrestling. So what is this? Um, so I'm actually I'm really glad I found that. Um, and then the other one, I think it had a clever name too, so I will find that real quick. Uh, yeah. Feel the Rush. Uh, it's the Leo Rush documentary. Uh, really cool. I just discovered Leo Rush not too long ago. I was like, oh, this, this kid's badass. Technically everyone did. It probably. <laughs> and then I watched the documentary and I'm like, oh, yeah, that, this, this dude really is badass. So... Yeah, uh, Kenny Johnson is the actual name of the YouTube channel, so check it out. They're cool. And the other thing you've been watching is Dalton Castle stuff. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, I w- watched the Sam Roberts podcast interview with Dalton Castle because I think Dalton Castle is great. Which is like one of the only Sam Roberts interviews I haven't watched yet because I'm not that big a Dalton Castle fan, but now I am. You sh- yeah. <clears throat> oh my god, Dalton Castle. And obviously, if you listen to the intro to the show, my last name is Peacock, so he's he's got the whole Peacock thing going, and so I relate to Dalton Castle. I don't know, he's he's just great. and the boys, you you just don't get better than Dalton and the boys. I mean, <laughs> that's one of the, my favorite gimmicks I've ever seen. And um, on the podcast, he Sam Roberts brings up how it's. Uh, kind of weird and sexualized. Yeah. And he's just like, there's nothing sexual at all to it. I don't know what you're talking about. And, uh, oh, it's great. But then I was just cruising around YouTube looking for, uh, Dalton Castle videos. And while we were at the What Show, the Wrestling Has a Tomorrow Show, there's a tag team and they were the Brotherhoods of, Brotherhood of the Traveling Tights. And I saw Dalton Castle, it was a Dalton Castle video, the Sisterhood of the Traveling Tights. And I was like, huh, what is this? And it was uh, like little interview videos he would do while he worked at a radio station, like 103, Q103 or something like that. Yeah, Q103, I think. Uh, In Albany, I think. I don't know. But they're really, really funny interviews. Um, Yeah, Q103 Albany, that sounds right. Yep. So I've been watching a bunch of those too, and uh, and I spent Friday night and Saturday learning as much as I could about Tommy End, who Tommy End may possibly be one of my favorite human beings on Earth right now. So you like the creepy ones? I do. I don't <laughs> think he's creepy. I think he's I think he's got a good head on his shoulders. I think he'll kick the head off of yours yeah. if he wants to. <laughs> At least that. He's is he's such a badass. He, no, he's de- he's definitely a badass, and um, super smart. It seems like, um, just and just very interesting. And he is, by the way, now Alistair Black in NXT. That's right. I should have said that because I don't want to take credit for knowing Tommy End before he was Alistair Black because I didn't. And now I'm really upset that I didn't because the Tommy End stuff, the Alistair Black stuff, is just is awesome. Because I mean, from his from the time I saw his vignettes for NXT, I was like, "Who is this guy?" The first yeah. time I saw it, I was like, "I need to find out who this guy is," and I couldn't because they didn't say Alistair Black coming soon. It was just like his tattoos, some candles, some music. I'm like, "What the fuck?" What is who is this guy? They never said his name, and then he debuted on one of the takeovers. Well, yeah, he showed up as Tommy End. Oh wait, no, no I'm on, sorry. You're, I was talking about the UK tournament. You're yeah, talking about an actual takeover. I, I didn't watch the uh, UK mind. tournament. Was that he on the showed network? up? Yes, he shows up uh, in the UK tournament. I think as, maybe he beat somebody up. He beat. He shows up as Tommy End. Yeah. Um, did he beat up Gallagher? I can't remember who he beat up, or if he even beat up anybody. I might be <laughs> lying. I watched where he showed up. I don't remember if he fought or not. But, uh, I would be surprised if he didn't, because he's... <laughs> he, I don't, he doesn't seem like the type that would be bothered to show up and not fight. I just had a funny thought. What's you know up? that website, Hot or Not? Yeah. 
<laughs> like fought or not. Fought or not. Whether or not these two wrestlers have fought before. <laughs> fought or Man, not. that'd be a great segment for the podcast. Fought or not. Fought or not. Um, that sounds like a disease, really, but <laughs> kind of does. Or it could be an app, and it's like, would you fight this person? No. For me, no. Every time. <laughs> Um, Unless it was like Jack Geller, then I'd probably fight him. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> when I see people like Tommy N, and uh, like someone who I respect their in game, in game, in ring capability. I just saw the word game. I think when I said that. <laughs> no, I didn't because it's not on the screen yeah, anymore. Like... Uh, in and I don't play video games, so I don't know where this came from, but. <clears throat> when I respect someone's in-ring capability so much, I want them. I want to get hit by them. I want to get hit by them so bad. Good lord! At least just once. And I don't know. Maybe. Not not Alistair Black though. I no. I, I didn't say kick. <laughs> I, just, uh. I don't care. Actually, I don't care. I would love to take like a roundhouse kick to the chest, just to be like I I've, I've been kicked by you Tommy. Crush your chest. You die. I might die, but. Who knows? I've taken some pretty stiff kicks before. Not from an Alistair Black. Not from Alistair Black, but we're not going to name someone who seems to refuse to show up on our show. But I, I will say right now, he has kicked me in the head so hard I could not hear. God. <laughs> I lost hearing for about a minute. <laughs> so that was pretty scary. But, yeah, it's just... <laughs> A lot of Alistair Black videos. I learned about the Sumerian Death Squad, which was Tommy End and Dante. I don't know if Dante has his last name. But those guys were, they look like straight up killers. They do, yeah. And uh, super badasses. If there's like a best of DVD out there of them, I would love to get my hands on it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure there's a best of Tommy End somewhere. Oh, there will there will be a best of Alistair Black, I'm sure, one day. I'm sure. As long he's, as he doesn't get injured. Well, he's already touring with Raw in the UK. Yeah, I th I think that's just because it's the UK and he's such a big deal there. Maybe, but I don't know, we'll see because I'm always spending a lot of time with the main roster. Yeah, I'm, but I'm also, I'm not taking it away from his ability or his right to be on the main show. Right. I just think he's going to be, I think he's going to be at NXT until they need him. I think they need him. I, I think so. Uh, they do. But I think I think he's going to be in NXT until Triple H thinks that they need him. I want to see Aleister Black versus Nakamura. Yes. Or Aleister Black versus Samoa Joe. Because I, I watched and then I showed you and then I I will probably rewatch it several more times. Um, Sammy Callahan versus Tommy yeah. and... I believe it was Southside Wrestling that which sounds was right. in the UK and that was that right now that's like my favorite match it was so intense yeah it was so good oh so good <laughs> but uh that's probably enough about Tommy and, and Alistair Black but uh that's about all there is to talk about so yeah so we want to move on to the news. Uh, yeah, what's going on here? So New Japan Pro Wrestling has unveiled that they have a United States Championship. And there's going to be a tournament, right, to decide who is the first champion? Uh, in, in Long Beach, California. Oh, wow. Um, so there's going to be a thing with ROH. Yeah. Isn't... Uh, I thought New Japan was starting a like a U.S. Like they are a US they're branch. supposed to be. Yep. Okay. Okay, I thought so. I thought it wasn't just like a tournament. All right, so good because <laughs> we're going back to Tommy in for a second. Um, <clears throat> I listened to his podcast with Cole Cabana, the Art of Wrestling, and Colt asked him if he's, you know, if he ever dreamed of being in the WWF while he was a kid like everyone does and apparently in Amsterdam which is in 
Holland, which is also called the Netherlands, I found out. Because <laughs> me and Cole Commander were both stupid Americans. We don't know anything. <laughs> um, <clears throat> apparently, the WWF did not come on TV over there. They had WCW and they had New Japan. So as a child, while we were watching Macho Man and Hulk Hogan, they were watching, like, Juice and Thunder Liger on New Japan. And that just kind of blows my mind, actually. But, um, yeah, so I was, I was jealous, too. Cause I was like, man, I wish we had New Japan with English commentary, because they had Dutch commentary. Right. And... Which makes sense because New Japan and WGW both had Dutch commentary. But WWE, I think WWE only ever had English and Spanish. That's very possible. For a long time, I and mean, now they have everything. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the last pay per view, I'm pretty sure the the Hindi team was just added. Which like, no, I don't think so. I think they were. I think we should go back and look. I but, think they they probably had had. Uh, that language for a while. Well, in the... Because usually the pay-per-views they go through and they're like, this is our Russian announcer team. I don't think they've had the Indian team before. I don't know. I don't think they did. Because like, cause I was like, oh, the, oh, the Hindi team. Okay, that's... That would explain what we've... You know, what we've heard about the Jinder Mahal push. Yeah. That they're branching into India. Now they have their... The announcer team... So, it's just smart. Sense. Yeah, it's I just, mean, there's a lot of people in India, and they love wrestling. There are a lot of people in India. That, yeah, that is a fact. <laughs> there are wrestling promotions over there that do very well. I didn't know that. I've I've never looked into TNA either owns one or partnered with one or something. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying I don't believe it whatsoever. I, I there's wrestling everywhere, and if there isn't, there should be, but. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, like Indian wrestling is not something I've ever. No, it's ever not. Really thought it's of. not really. Yeah, it's not really a thing, but now it is starting to be. Well, that's good. Everyone, everyone needs some pro wrestling. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'll be interested to see what happens with this United States Championship. Yeah, and um, so who do you think is going to win it? Oh, uh, man. See, the only thing we know is Jay Lethal and Hangman Page. And Kenny Omega probably won't be in it. I really don't know. I, I mean, it all depends on what guys they get. Okay, here's a question. Do you think it'll be a Bullet Club member to win it? Uh, it doesn't need to be. No, it doesn't need to be, but do you think it will be? Ah. Uh. I mean, it kind of makes sense promotional-wise. Okay, this is why I think that it's either going to be... This is why I think it's going to be a Bullet Club member. Because Hot Topic has just signed to start carrying Bullet Club t-shirts. Elite. Elite shirts. But that's ju that's just them. That's not a New Japan thing. Actually, I think it's like a New Japan... I think they're going to have other people from New Japan. As far as I know, it's just it's just Kenny and the Bucks. Like, they themselves negotiated with Hot Topic. Oh, really? That's the way let's, it looks. Let me see. Um, well, I'm going to look that up, but let's talk about what the... How, how do the you feel about the belt? looks like a, a wacky fucking Japanese belt. Like, it, it doesn't it surprise does. me. It, it should. It should not look like one of our belts, I don't think. I don't think it should really resemble something that... It looks like somebody, like, and I told you this earlier, it looks like somebody took a championship belt, drank some of that Mountain Dew USA, <laughs> and ate an apple pie, and barfed all over it. There we have the belt. Okay, and, and we said, I should, probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. It does look like something you'd find in like a, the Chinese food places. Now, no, we live in rural Florida. Where, Does it make it okay? Well, no, no. Where like our Chinese food places have Chinese decorations, they have Korean decorations. Let me tell you something. I just got back from Orlando. It was the same way. Uh, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so we live in America. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so now I have to bring this up. In one of the 
What? One of the uh, the Sisterhood of the Traveling Tights. Dalton Dalton Castle asked Sammy Callahan what his favorite part of America was, and Sammy Callahan's rea- reaction was being American. So <laughs> that and same with all of our uh, our. Uh, yeah, hot topic Chinese makes deal with Bullet Club. I thought it was just the elites. No, I didn't. Yeah, maybe I that was just the way the the Bucks made it look because I followed them. <laughs> Could on, be uh, Twitter. Uh, it's a video, but it's muted, so it's okay. And it's I also a weird little kid. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's one thing. That you know, it is pro wrestling though. A lot of videos you find are the uh, second one. Children. Wrestle Zone. Yeah. Bullet Club merchandise be featured in Hot Topic. Oh, so Pro Wrestling T signed a deal. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, but yeah, I think since we're gonna see hot Bullet and Bullet Club shirts are one, they're gonna sell the fuck out. Yeah. Because they look cool as hell. Oh, I went to a Hot Topic when I was in Orlando, and then realized like, oh, they're probably not here yet. Yeah. Yeah, because I was making plans to go to a hot topic. Get me the fuck out of here. Once again, rural Florida. We have to drive like an at least an hour to get to a hot topic. Yeah. But that's yeah, okay. I'm I want a bullet club shirt. Yeah, look at that American Nightmare, Cody, Young Bucks, Kenny. I like the Kenny Kenny Omega eight bit shirt. They're probably gonna have his Tekken shirt too. That's too cool. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. I can't wait till we can. Till they're, I don't want to say readily available, but available for us in yeah. brick and mortar stores. But that's why I think it'll be a Bullet Club member to win a uh, maybe to win the title. But I don't know, like you said, it doesn't have to be. I mean, it could just as easily be J- Jay Lethal. Yeah. Who once again, living in Florida, he's got his school that is. Maybe an hour from us. Yeah, and a dude that totally deserves it. Oh, hands down, yeah. And like I like I know guys who train with Jay Lethal. <laughs> it's so cool to be able to say that. I don't train with Jay Lethal. I, I don't train at all. But I know people who do train with Jay Lethal. And it's cool. All right, drown yourselves. <laughs> Jay Lethal. Name drop one more time. Uh, is are we there? No, we're here. Okay. Are we there yet? What? Have you seen that movie? No. I don't know. It's got like Ice Cube in it. Oh, that. Okay. Ice T. One of them guys. So, The Rock discussed with uh, one of these freaking Hollywood things why he wasn't at WrestleMania 33. My reason for this is because he doesn't need to be at every fucking WrestleMania. I think he does. It's The Rock. It's WrestleMania. The Rock needs to be at WrestleMania. I was surprised he wasn't at WrestleMania. I was I, happy. I, I was, I'm, I'm not going to say I was disappointed, but I'm not. I was surprised he wasn't there. We didn't really get any kind of legend spot. Yeah, and that's fine. Yeah, does oh. then we get better matches and longer matches? No, we didn't. No. Uh, this just, <laughs> it means that we have the possibility of getting better, longer matches. Yeah. I thought we were going to have, and uh, a, a lot of other people also thought we were going to get a uh, thing between Vin Diesel and The Rock. Because Fe- yeah, uh, kind of neat. Yeah, Fate of the Furious was coming out like that weekend or something like that. And... Which to go off at a small tangent here, I started watching Fast and the Furious, the first one. Yeah, because I was like, I'm gonna if I can get into this, I'm gonna watch all these because I know a lot of people who love these movies. But yeah, not gonna happen. God damn it, that movie's bad. What? Fast no. Furious, the first one. No. So fucking dumb. timeless. Classic. No, it's not. You have to Gone go with and watch the it. wind. Oh, I've rewatched it. We have a new saying on my stream. Because this fucking saying in the show or the movie. Because, no, you stand by your car. I can drive it. Like, no, yeah, that, you, that's perfectly reasonable. Exactly. <laughs> so you can't even argue with it. God damn, it's so stupid. It is perfect. <laughs> it is a perfect movie. Did not, Oh my god, no. I think it was the second one. This is the last podcast. I can't even deal with this <laughs> shit. I, well, a kid I used to wrestle with a long, long, long time ago, uh, he was an extra in the second movie. Mm, sorry. <laughs> Which, I love the I love the first one, I love the second one, and I am probably one of three people in the entire world 
that thinks the third movie is the best. Tokyo Drift? Yeah. That is the one I like. Yeah. <laughs> There's okay. four people so, now. <laughs> no, we're just two of the three. Okay. There's one other person out there. And if you're listening, let us know. I can't. I just can't. I can't watch eight movies like that. And apparently after like four or twelve, they they change and they're not about standing next to your car driving. It's like espionage and yeah, I don't know. Submarines with missiles. There's and... just too many movies I haven't seen that I'd rather see. <laughs> right, yeah. That's why, I mean, if if it comes on, someone puts it on, I'm not going to be like, I'm not watching Fast and the Furious, but I'm not going to go out of my way to watch it. Yeah, I can't. Like you said, there's plenty of other movies. There's literally eight other movies I'd rather watch. <laughs> Alright, so welcome to the Future Heels Movie Podcast. <laughs> not how you stand by your car, it's how you drive it. <laughs> Oh, that's, I don't know, we could do a movie podcast. We're not, don't go. Don't get your hopes up, because I know you're hoping for it, but we're not going to do that. That movie's really bad. <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> oh, okay, so yeah, and uh, apparently the reason The Rock actually wasn't at WrestleMania oh, yeah, we should probably say is that. Uh, because he was filming Ballers. Fuck yeah, that show's great. I haven't seen it. See, that's so something fucking good. I should watch that instead. It looks really good. I yeah. love that show. I also love the fuck out of Entourage. I was about to bring up Entourage. So good. And I haven't I haven't seen it. Best show of all time. I heard it's a real like like dude show. It is. Guy show. It's so good. Like not like a manly show, but like a real like It's all about friendship. Uh, I, I'm not <laughs> it's so good. All right, um, and on to this, I believe. Uh, sure, yeah. Which we're gonna watch right after this. Yeah, we probably should have watched it before we recorded, but yeah. we're gonna report on it to you. I've got a shitload of work to do before we watch it. Well, we're gonna report on this one bit. Uh, do you do you want to? You just want to, or do you want to run down the whole card and spoil yeah, it? Yeah, fuck that! I'm not gonna run down the whole card. Well, I think we should because if you haven't seen. That's exactly it. You, we well, shouldn't run down the whole card because they need to go watch it. For ROH. Well, no spoilers then. Let's just say the matches. Oh, all right. Go ahead. And then one big spoiler at the end. Yes. Because, fuck you. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> First match, uh, the last real man, Silas Young, versus Koshida, versus Dalton Castle, versus Bobby Fish. What I learned today. Dalton Castle and Bobby Fish are best friends. And, and also, uh, so, um, Bobby is Dalton's father. Yeah, Dal- uh, yeah, Bobby Fish is apparently Dalton Castle's father. Um, if you haven't seen that promo, try to find it because the boys are used as furniture. And they get mad and push them over. That was great. Uh, yeah. And the boys just stay in position the whole time. It's it's perfect. Um, so, Dalton Castle and Bobby Fish are amazing. Silas Young, uh, I've seen a handful of his matches. He's pretty entertaining. And Kushida is just great. Uh, you, you have to love the Kushida gimmick with the, the Back to the Future theme. And he's just, he's just really fun to watch. Uh, I'm not going to tell you the winner of the match. Um, but the next match was Frankie Kazarian versus Hangman Page of the Bullet Club, of course. Um, <laughs> Frankie Kazarian uh, kind of had a falling out with the Bullet Club, if you didn't know. <laughs> he, is, he was in the Bullet Club for all of like 33 minutes, I believe. Um, after... He helped, uh, well, after it looked like he was about to help Adam Cole retain the title against Christopher Daniels, uh, he turned on him, uh, rip, taking, I believe he took his Bullet Club shirt off and had uh, the shirt for him and Christopher Daniels. Keep going, you're doing great. Thank you. What, what was uh, Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian's name again? I want to say ascension, but that's obviously not right. Uh, something addiction. The the oh yeah, he he had uh, a shirt for the addiction, 
on. So yeah, he was all of. He was in Bullet Club for all of like a week and a half or something like that. <clears throat> so I believe this is Bullet Club getting kind of getting their revenge on Frankie Kazarian and Hangman Page. He's a, he's a badass too. I I, I want to see more of his matches. I want to learn more about him too, but that looks like it's going to be a really good match. Uh, next one on the card, uh, <clears throat> we get more of the New Japan guys. We get Evil and Sonata. Uh, you know, I, I can't really pronounce their tag team name. Maybe Jacob can when he gets back. Uh, versus War Machine versus Search and Destroy, who is... Chris Saban, Jonathan Grisham with Alex Shelley. Um, Evil and Sonata, I, I sort of know who they are. I've seen, once again, a handful of their matches. Did you say John Grisham? Yeah. Like the guy from uh, America's Most Wanted? Yeah, probably. I think that's him. <laughs> Search, <laughs> Search and Destroy? I don't, I don't know. What do you mean... America's the most wanted. <laughs> the show. <laughs> you mean John Walsh? John? Oh no, there's a Grisham. Is there a Grisham? I think John Grisham is like a uh, like a sports center guy or something. Just look up Grisham. Or an author? John Grisham, an author, politician, attorney, activist. Uh, <laughs> okay, but yeah, John Walsh is from America's okay. Most Wanted. Unless he's not, then once again, let us know. Um, here, can you pronounce Evil and Sonata's tag team name? <laughs> Los Unbangables. Um, not quite. Los and Gobbledygooks. Closer. Los and burn barrels. Mm. Los and burnables. Yeah, we're gonna stick with that. That last one's actually <laughs> close to the closest. Yeah, in the burnables or something. Something. I don't know. Watch the pay per view. They'll say it. You know. Then you don't know how to pronounce it. Unlike us, because we're watching it after we report on it. Um. But I'm a big fan of War Machine, especially after I found out that um, at least one of them is Straight Edge. So now I'm an even bigger fan of War Machine. I don't know if Hanson is, but Roe is. Uh, and I had a suspicion because I saw the Triple X thing on his tights, I believe. Right. Uh, or maybe like a ring jacket or something. Um so I was like, oh, I wonder if he's straight edge. And I came across him on Instagram, and it says that he is. I said, oh, badass. So now, I sure hope War Machine wins that match. As I read who won the match. Um, Jay White and Will Ospreay are the next one. Uh, Will Ospreay, I know a tiny bit. I know he likes to do lots of flips and flies and... Yes, Will Ospreay is really awesome. And Jay White, I've only seen one of his matches. Uh, so I don't know. I'm sure it's going to be good. I know Jay White was really good when I saw him. Will Ospreay is entertaining. Yeah, Will Ospreay is one of those guys that's like Ricochet. Yeah. Like a Ricochet or an Ace Alexander. That's what I've seen. Or an Ace Alexander. I like yeah. how that's thrown in there. Uh, he'd appreciate it. Um, yeah. I think Will Ospreay and Ricochet, like, I, I think I see, like, their clips, like, once a day. Like, right. And I don't even follow that much wrestling on, like, Facebook. But I think at least once a day I come across a Will Ospreay Ricochet video. Uh, the next match is for the Ring of Honor Six-Man Tag Team Champions. Um, we've got... Bully Ray... And the Briscoes. Copyright? Yeah, probably. The Briscoes. Alright. Uh, Bully Ray and the Briscoes. Oh, we need some help. 
versus uh, Haruki. Haruki. Oh, I think it's Haruki. Haruki go to. I think it's Gato. Nah, it's go to. Go to. I believe it's Hiroki Gato, Rocky Romero, and Beretta. Um, and weren't didn't we just see Rocky Romero and Beretta versus the Briscoes? Yeah, I think so. Somewhere and that was really was that in a hardcore match. Yeah, it was something with the Bucks, um, or something like that. I don't know. But I remember that match was really good. This one's going to be really good. And it's also for the titles. Uh, the next match on the card. Uh, probably probably the one I'm most excited to see. And the one I've been most excited to see for uh, the last few weeks. Is Marty Skrull versus Matt Seidel. Or Evan Bourne, if you will. No, and they're printable. Hold on now. What's going on over there? I'm trying to get my phone to say Los Incompertables. <laughs> <clears throat> Alright, but going. the villain Marty Skrull and Matt Seidel. Matt Seidel, I remember when he my right. phone, my phone, it says Marty Scroll versus Matt Slide Out. <laughs> Matt Slide Out. All right. Uh, I, that's not a bad name. Uh, no, but, uh, I wouldn't use it. It's not that funny. It's just funny to me. <laughs> oh, anyway, Marty Scroll, the villain, uh, um, quickly became a fan. Like, the first match I saw of him. I think he either was just winning or was defending his TV title. I think I went back and watched all of his matches since he won the TV title. And they're all good. Yeah, he's a guy that kind of came out of nowhere. For us, at least. I think he, yeah. I, I think he was probably a bigger deal in Europe. Yeah. Europe. <laughs> you we, say that right. Because we're American. Yep. Yep. I learned how to say that from a former president. <laughs> Bush would pronounce it Europe. Oh. <laughs> anyway, that's not what this podcast is about. Um. Yeah, so I'm super excited to see this match. Um, I'm sure we'll talk about it on the next podcast. What we actually thought of it. Um, next match. Young Bucks versus Naito and Bushi, once again from uh, the Burn Barrel team, uh, for the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championship. Um, so just like I've noticed, I've been saying about all these matches. I like but all these guys; they're all really good. Match is gonna be great. Next match, <laughs> uh, which just so happens to be the the main event: Tanahashi versus Adam Cole. Um, Adam Cole is one of your favorites of all time. Yeah, isn't he? he is. Yeah, Adam Cole, baby, <laughs> suck my dick. Uh, not one of my favorites. Shut up. Not n- not saying it. he is very entertaining. He's very good. I've been following Adam Cole for a long since time since the beginning of my new wrestling fandom. Right. Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, Kevin Steen, uh, Davey Richards are kind of my my four pillars of why I started watching wrestling again. Now, how many people out of that were in Mount Rushmore? Uh, or whatever uh, the, not Kyle O'Reilly, not Davey. It was Adam, Kevin, and the Bucks. Oh, okay. So close enough. Uh, so this is a, I believe this is the main event. Be surprised as hell if it was not. Yeah, it is. Okay, yeah. That is a great main event. Because, yeah. like I said, Adam Cole, I'm not a fan of. But it's. I think it's because I'm not supposed to be a fan of him. Which means he's just doing his job great. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, if I don't like a character, that means you're doing your job. Because... No doubt. But if I don't like you as a wrestler, then I don't... 
you need to fix it. I'm here to judge. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Adam Cole just does the job really well. So that's why I don't like him. Because I'm not supposed to. He's an incredible in-ring performer. Oh, yeah. And Tanahashi, I mean, I, we found out about Tanahashi when we watched Wrestle Kingdom 9. Yeah. I believe. Um, it's hard to follow because we don't, like I said, we don't get New Japan. I mean, I'm, I know there's ways to watch it, but don't really follow too much. But anytime Tana, I see Tanahashi on anything, I'm going to watch it. Right. Because the first time we saw him, Tanahashi versus Okada, it's mind-blowing. Yeah. Yeah, that match w- was definitely life-changing. That made me really get into Japanese wrestling again. And the last ring, I think it was the last Ring of Honor event, they had a... Mustn't go vertibles. I'm sorry, what was that? I that. said it right. And convertibles. <laughs> that um, only took me like 30 minutes to figure out how to do that. Well, last time Ring of Honor went to Japan for a, a show. Honor Rising, I believe it was called. Dalton Castle was there, but he couldn't bring the boys. And Tanahashi was one of the boys for, <laughs> for him. It was Tanahashi and the other guy, I can't remember his name, but... His gimmick, which I don't think is really much of a gimmick, he was an M- MMA fighter. Do you know who I'm talking about? Uh, we saw him in Wrestle Kingdom. I know who you're talking about. I don't know his name. Yeah, I can't remember his name. But they were both, they were both, they came out, because I love Tanahashi's ring gear. So I was like, oh, Tanahashi, I love just seeing like his jackets and stuff. It's really cool. But he comes out. Oh. Future Heels Podcast. It's funny to me, okay? Let's keep going. It's funny Someone to me. know they will find that funny. It's funny to me, damn it. That's right. <laughs> um, oh, that is. Tanahashi and the other guy came out. They were dressed as the boys. They did the whole, whole the boys spiel with the fan and the taking off of Dalton Castle's clothes and just everything. And Tanahashi is like the... John Cena of Japan, from what I yeah. understand. And there's no way in hell John Cena would ever do something like that. Yeah, he would. I don't think so. Yeah, he would. You think, I think he would. You think he would go out dressed in a little mask with feathers and take take another man's clothes off? Yeah. I really do. If Dalton Castle was, like, super over? Yeah, uh, maybe. Totally. Maybe. But that... Awkward silence. See, that right there, that bar, just added that out. <laughs> but no. you can't edit that out now. Um, so yeah, as a main event, that looks awesome. So here comes a spoiler. Um, skip ahead a few minutes if you don't want to hear this. Uh, if you don't skip ahead, you're fucked. Marsh Girls in the Bullet Club. See, you spoil it for me. <laughs> sort of. Because uh, Tanahashi wins... And I've watched a lot of video of this already because I was like, what? Yes, yes. And I got super excited. I, I, I don't do the Daniel Bryan yes thing, but I almost did. I'm a Brian Danielson fan. <laughs> uh, Kitty Omega shows up on the Ring of Honor screen. Kitty Omega? Kitty Omega. I want to see Kitty Omega. <laughs> that needs to be a shirt <laughs> right now. You're welcome, Kenny. Yeah, because I know you're listening to this too. They, they all listen. Yeah. So, Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega. Funny to me, damn it. Basically, he tells, uh, tells Adam Cole that he's fired. Yeah. And that for every hero, there needs to be a villain. And Marty Squirrel standing next to him in the video. And the lights go out. And... It takes quite a while for them to come back on. Well, Marty had to go from Japan. Yeah, Marty had to fly over. from Japan over. And uh, Marty was standing in the ring in the corner at, when the lights came back on. And the Bucks were in the other two corners. And, Shocked. Yeah, they were like, what's going on? And then Adam Cole was kind of in the middle 
of the ring, kind of like, yeah, what the fuck is going on? And then Marty points his umbrella at Adam Cole and opens it up, and it's the fucking Bullet Club logo. And the Young Bucks kind of look at each other and just super kick Adam Cole. Oh, it was glorious. I want, I I did watch that a couple times. <laughs> oh, yeah, we watched it like three times just today. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, man, I'm, I'm super excited. I, I love Marty Skrull being in the Bullet Club. I'm very happy Adam Cole is out of the Bullet Club. Not because I don't like Adam Cole and I don't think he should be in it. Because he totally should. It works. But I felt with Cody Rhodes, Adam Cole, and Kenny Omega, that was too many cooks in the kitchen, if you yeah. know. They Agreed. need... Marty Skrull is awesome. He's great. But he's not someone who could be misconstrued misconstrued yeah is that the word i'm looking for yeah. misconstrued as the leader of the bullet club misconstrual i used to have those every day before i went to school for breakfast misconstrual <laughs> um oh marty scroll in the bullet club it's awesome adam cole obviously left the bullet club because the next thing but well, let me just say if you don't watch this pay-per-view Watch the, the whole reveal. Watch Kenny Omega's fucking promo. Yeah. He is just so good. He's so good. He wasn't even there, and he just left such an impact on the show. Yeah. It's amazing. But the reason why Adam Cole is leaving is because he's most likely on his way to NXT TakeOver Chicago. Yeah, I heard from someone. I don't remember where I heard it, but I heard it. I could have been. I could have said it myself, and I heard myself say it. But he might. All right. I, I guess he's supposed to be in the uh, like in the crowd for same way know. they did Bobby Roode and uh, who else did they do that to? Drew McIntyre. Yes. Yes, because they were sitting in the same exact seat. Yeah. <laughs> they were just like, this is the hype seat. <laughs> this is where the new guys will sit, and we will film them. And they stay hype. Yeah, well, no, because I'm not a Mojo Rally fan. <laughs> but, because the, the, at least the last one, or the one where they showed Bobby Roode and Drew McIntyre, they had, uh, is that, there was a guy behind him that looked just like Seth Rogen. I'm like, oh, look, there's that same guy again. That is the same exact seat. So it must just be their hype seat. And, yeah, yeah I, I guarantee you Adam Cole's going to be in that hype seat. In Chicago. Or he's going to attack somebody. I would like that much better. Because I don't feel like Adam Cole is the type to like be put on the pedestal to be brought in. I feel like he should come in fighting. Yeah. I'm proud of myself for coming up with that. <laughs> well, he should come in fighting? I, no, no. Just the whole... Just my whole thought process. Okay. Because <laughs> like Bobby Roode being glorious, like he shouldn't show up and like jump somebody. Because that's not glorious. Right. Drew McIntyre has been there. People know who he is. Even if you don't watch anything except WWE. So it's like, ooh, Drew McIntyre's back. Look at that. And apparently he's supposed to be the chosen one, from what you said. Yes. And what, um, Vince McMahon's chosen one. Yeah. What uh, Cody Rhodes said in the show we watched about earlier that we haven't talked about that yet either. Um, which we will. Um, but yeah, I don't... Adam Cole... Is like as far as I can tell from his character, he's he's just not that person. He's not that person to be like spotlighted to be like, oh, Adam Cole's gonna be here. Yeah. It's like Adam Cole is here and he's gonna kick your ass. Pretty much. So, Adam Cole, baby. Yeah. I I hate how much I like that. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like there's a there's a Bullet Club shirt that says baby, and I'm like, oh, you think you'll have to drop the suck my dick gimmick? <clears throat> Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Is Vince watching? <laughs> oh. <clears throat> oh my god. Just, the one thing, because I never, I didn't watch a lot of, a lot of Adam Cole. But the one thing I did, and like, I think this might be where any actual hatred I have for him comes from. The, it was him and Michael... Michael Elgin? Is that his name? Yeah. The big guy? Yeah. Just this, this uh, the storyline they had. It was 
fucked up. Like, I don't remember exactly what happened because I watched it forever and a half ago. Right. But, oh my god, like, we need to go back and I need to try to find some of the shit that happened for that. I don't really remember this. It was... I was like, how is this guy allowed to do these things right. to another human being? Like, <laughs> I don't know, it was bad. I was like, what the fuck, man? I don't know. Right, I'm not well, sure what you're referring to. Well, I'll see if I can find it and show okay. you. I was... Man. It was... It was bad. But, um... Yeah, and then we watched, um... um Huh? But, um... Uh, we watched the... What Culture Pro... World Pro WCPW, Wrestling Cup? WCPW, What Culture Pro Wrestling World Cup? I think it's just called World Cup. I, I had it up earlier. Where yeah, no, go? you don't. Uh, if you don't know, What Culture is basically... You should know. What Culture is a multi-brand channel. They have What Culture, What Culture Gaming, and What Culture Wrestling. I didn't know. Um, what Culture Wrestling, I want to say, is the thing that really you know, pushed them to the sky. But uh, they have top ten lists. They have Adam... Pac- not Adam Pacitti. Adam Blompier, now known as Blumpy, legally. I thought Adam Pacini was in it. Pacini, I don't know what he does. I think he's, like, he's more behind the scenes. Oh, his, his name was just on the roster. That's Yeah, it was under alumni for some fucking reason. Yeah, I don't know. But, I don't uh, know. no, Blompier is the one who is kind of the face of the company, I would say. Um, he does uh, the How I Would Book things. Like, he did How I Would Book uh, the Balor Club debut, How I Would Book this WrestleMania, How I Would Book the Royal Rumble. Very, very well-researched, excellent videos. They do top tens. Uh, Simon Miller does um, a type of show that I would I would love to do is basically just controversial topics like why Roman's really good. Um, <laughs> but yet so, now they have started their own wrestling promotion in the UK and they just they do so fucking well. Do you know how long the promotion's been around? Not that long. Not, okay. I mean, so, Loaded they said is coming back. So, so I, I don't feel so bad for not knowing about them. One, because they're fairly new. Two, because it's definitely more of a YouTube thing. Yes. And three, because they're fucking British. Yeah, you but I dealt British. with it for three hours. Yeah, you did. Three hours. Proud of you. No, I, I'm not going to lie. It was good wrestling. It was, one, yeah, great wrestling. Two, commentators are really good, too. Matt Seidel was the commentator. No, he wasn't. Not. No, that was not his <laughs> name. Matt Stryker. I used nope. to, I, I, I was about you to say. You Matt Seidel, and I'm like, don't say he's a commentator. Don't say he's a commentator. <laughs> I used to get those two guys mixed up all the time, and apparently right. I still do. <clears throat> so, they're, well, like I said, when we were going through the roster, all these white guys look the same. So, we watched the Mexico part of it. Surprise, guys. I'm white. <laughs> I look like everyone else. Um, yeah, we watched the, uh, yeah, the Mexico part. Basically, what's going on. We watched the Mexico one. I think the Scottish one has already happened. The English one March, has already yes. happened. I don't know. I'm sure the English one happened first. Um, we still have the Japanese and the German one to happen. And C- Canada. C- Canada. Yeah, Canada's about to happen. Today. Today. Right, right now. now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just not live like the yeah. Mexico one was. The top two guys from every tournament. Oh, the Mexico one was live on Cinco de Mayo. Was it really? Yeah, because I was like, because I remember looking like, oh, that was, uh, that just came out on my birthday. See, I should have watched this. These one culture guys, you're a bunch of clever motherfuckers. <laughs> that is pretty clever. <laughs> but uh, the top two guys from every tournament are going to go on to the World Cup to compete for their country. Which I think is one of the coolest fucking things I've ever heard of. Yeah, this has never happened. No, WCW did this. Did they? 99% sure WCW did a thing like this. And that's very possible. I mean, I watched WCW, but I wasn't like a hardcore follower. I wasn't supposed to watch it. I wasn't either. So. I just remember they, they were, WCW really pushed the international I know, flavor. yeah, I know they had a lot of international flavor. But, like this, like an, an indie style World Cup. I yeah. really hope whoever wins gets an actual cup. Yeah, they, like, they very well might may. Oh, I, and just the the production quality is great. I would be surprised if they didn't. Like, I'm just saying, I hope it's not a belt. 
Like, belts yeah. are cool, but it's the World Cup. I'm sure there is a World Cup. But I think it would be really cool. I like... I like when wrestlers win more than title belts. Yes. Um, my... F- first show I produced completely by myself was the Arthur Andrews Invitational. And the winner of the tournament that night won a trophy. I don't remember who the winner was. I don't think it was me. Because I don't think I would book myself to go over that much. Notice I said that much. I think I made it to the finals. No, I think Spartan beat me. Who is now a police officer. So I won't say his real name. But he beat me. And he deserved it. Because that guy was amazing. And if he wasn't a police officer... Even if he is, he should still wrestle. No so, one knows who all these people are. He does. He's listening. Because everyone so. listens. Everyone listens to us. Even people who don't know they're listening to us. Get back in the ring, Spartan. Yeah, definitely look up the What Culture Pro Wrestling World Cup. So good. Freaking Stu Bennett was on commentary. The former, uh... Stu Bennett. Oh my god, why did I just blink on his name? Barrett. Yes, Wade Barrett. Thank you. Bad News Barrett. That's what I called him earlier. That I was like, Bad News, what, what's his real name? I can't think of his real name. Bad News, Jonathan Grisham. <laughs> <laughs> he even got in the ring and knocked a dude out. He did? With that uh, bull hammer? Is that what it's yep. called? I love Wade Barrett. I yeah. don't know why they ever released him. Yeah, but I, well, I was just going through YouTube like we've been doing. I've been doing it for the entire weekend, basically. And I saw Alberto El Patron, who I hate. Dick. Once again, probably because I'm supposed to hate him. And no, he's a, he's a piece of shit in real life. Okay. Versus Rey Mysterio. I was like, oh, okay, cool. And I, I saw anything Rey Mysterio's in. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I even got the movie his uncle was in, Rey Mysterio Sr. Oh, that horror movie? Yeah. And it's shit. It's a horror movie. Most, most horror movies are bad. But that's okay, because they're supposed to be. Or... Yeah. And it, I mean, I liked it, though. I, I watched it. I think I watched it twice. This show in particular is really good. Because we have Rey Mysterio and uh, Humundu Guerrera and Pentagon. Oh, and Pentagon. Phoenix. I thought I called him the wrong thing again. I called him Pentagram earlier. Yeah. Uh, well, now he's, uh, what is it? Penta L... Penta L Zero M? Uh, something like that, yeah. Oh, I don't like you saying his name. I don't know. I, no. Or Pentagon Dark, I guess, is another one he went by. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the farewell match between Cody Rhodes and Drew Galloway. That was great. That last match between Martin Kirby and Joe Hendry. I don't know who either of these guys are. I've no. never heard of them before. No. I know their names now. Yes. That match. Yeah. To well, watch that match. match. Yeah, it's the Mexico. Joe Hendry, if you're listening to this, fuck off. Uh, yeah, that guy was a dick. He, the, the Kirby guy, who by the way does yes has Kirby on his gear. Don't spoil this match. Don't spoil. Okay, I won't no. spoil it. But can I say the real dick thing he did? Okay, well, which one? Okay, well, okay. So Kirby gets hurt, and they're the the ringside doctors are trying to help, and. What's the other guy's name? Joe Hendry. Joe Hendry? Okay, so Hendry gets out of the ring, grabs the first aid kit, runs over to the ramp, and throws it up that the was ramp. Pretty good. I was like, what? What a fucking asshole! <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah, and then just so many other things. And then, like, you don't know what happened at the end, and all of a sudden you find out what happens, and just, it was good. Now, I almost spoiled it. I almost spoiled it. Was the spoiler was coming out. Up, and it was a very upsetting ending. Upsetting oh, yeah. for the best reasons. Yeah. Without trying to give too much away. Yeah, definitely watch. And I would never promote to watch anything with British accents in it. Watch the Pro Wrestling World Cup. I can't wait to see. I can't wait to go back and find the Scottish one. Yeah, we might have to watch that later. I might skip the English one. <laughs> but the, the German one. The Canadian one that's happening right now. They've got such good names. And the Canadian one has Moose and uh, uh, Brian Cage, Harry Smith, Michael Elgin, Renee Dupree. It doesn't have Brian Cage. No, I, I know. I just mixed up Brian Cage and Michael Elgin. Okay. Uh, Tyson Dukes. 
Brian Cage was at that show I almost went to in Orlando on Friday yeah. night, though. Kyle O'Reilly? This is a loaded fucking card. But speaking of the show I almost went to, I feel like I should bring it up. And we were worried our show wouldn't be that, wouldn't be long enough today. Yeah. Oh, no. We have so much more to talk about. We should have skipped Raw and SmackDown. That was boring. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't spend much time on it. I want to make sure I get the name of the promotion right, because this was their first show. Yeah, you're a couple down there. <clears throat> uh, and I hope... I, I think they're out of Orlando. I think they're going to continue Orlando shows. Hopefully, because it sounded like it was a really, really good show. What I thought was interesting about Division One Pro Wrestling, they had weight classes. Uh-oh. Uh-oh I'm sorry. I take that back. It's not Division 1. Because I've heard of Division 1. It is Division Pro Wrestling. Take the one out. Yeah. Minus one. No one. Unless you want to. and I mean, I'm not going to really put down any promotion. But, but Division Pro, uh, they had their match broken up into um, weight classes, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, but the show started at 4 in the afternoon, which is why I didn't go, because I wouldn't have made, there, made it there on time. Uh, but then I realized that 4 was the weigh-ins. Like, it looks like this is put together a lot like a... Uh, MMA? Yeah, like an MMA fight. Because it's broke weight divisions, weigh-ins, uh, and all that. But, yeah, they had Brian Cage, they had Sammy Callahan, Kyle O'Reilly, Leo Rush. I, it would have been worth the, uh, hey, it would have been about a two-hour drive for me to get there. Hour and a half, Not two even, hours. Yeah, it took an hour and a half. Um, it definitely would have been worth the drive. Yeah. Um. I was and then I saw I can get it on iPay pay per view, but it was, it was like thirty something dollars. Like, ah, no yeah, no better off to drive it up there next time. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep an eye out for their their next Brian, event. Brian Cage versus Moose. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with Moose. Moose is pretty cool. You know who I bet would love Moose? Who? Brooks. Yeah. Because that's like that that was his nickname at one time. Was Doesn't it? Moose do the hand thing? Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> Jeremy does that too. Brooks does that Brooks is too. supposed to be here. So you yell at him on Twitter. Yeah. On Facebook. Wherever. I don't know. Wherever you can find Brooks. Uh, he should be here next week. And speaking, speaking of, of next, next week. Haha, <laughs> we did it again. Yes. So you're going to be hearing that some. Because. Oh, as I get out of this comfy chair. Yeah, the indie show we went to. Not only did we attend the show. We were commentary. We were commentary. We were okay. No. We're okay, right? No, we were okay. It was fine. We we're did right. so we did mostly play by play. It was our first time. Yeah. Um the show was excellent though. It was. We are going to have is, is is this your first was this your first indie show? Did I take you to your first no, indie I've show? No, I've been to NXT shows. NXT shows don't count. No? No. Why not? Because they're, they're not indie shows. Uh, then yes. Okay, I just realized that too, by the way. That was your first indie show. I mean, I love NXT indie shows. shows. NXT shows. Okay. I went to WrestleMania 24. That's pretty indie. <laughs> <laughs> pretty sure that counts. Uh, they were scrapping. Scra <laughs> scraping to get by. Oh. So yeah, we went to uh, Wrestling Has a Tomorrow What... And it was what is left to give. Right. We are going Absolutely. to have clips on our YouTube channel. Uh, we have an excellent video up right now. We had a guest show up. Oh, big name. Big name. He's here with us every time we do the podcast. He's, he's just quiet. He's pretty quiet. Quieter than I am. I mean, he's not great at promos, that's why. Yeah, he, he's shit at promos, so he kind of learned to keep his mouth shut. Right, Roman? Roman Reigns, everybody. All right. He still doesn't even want to talk. I really but, wish you would have just let that go for like 45 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
So. <laughs> <laughs> what been funny to us? Yeah. But, um, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, Roman showed up and he decimated the whole roster. And that's all I'm going to say about that video. Yeah, that spear that he hit on Chris Braddock, though. Yeah, well, he almost. My had, God! Yeah, he almost had to get removed from the show. Yeah. The show was excellent. Oops. It ended kind of terrifying. But we're yeah. going to have mm-hmm. more on that next week when Chris yeah. is on. Yeah. That, um, the show exactly. was excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah. The entire show was excellent. Um, we're going to have more information on where to find the whole show. Like I said, we're going to have some clips up. Um, we're going to have. Uh, what is it? Benny Slater? Derek Hill. Benny Slater versus Derek Hill. Yeah. Is uh, the match that's going to go up today. And that was. God, that was a good match. That kid has not been wrestling very long, Derek Hill. The party king. Yeah, he's very good. He is excellent. Um, a little sad we're not going to see Benny Slater too much because he's not super local. He was from uh, Pennsylvania, I believe. Yeah, if you see his name, though, go see him. Yeah, he was He was so good. Tell him the future he'll send to you. Yeah. Uh, well, the show was very good. Uh, I wish that we recorded. I don't. Did we get video of Wrestle Kingdom versus the Sunshine nope. State Stretchers? We recorded. Uh, well, they recorded the whole thing. That's why I'm yeah. saying we're gonna be able to find more of this later. Uh, we recorded uh, Benny Slater and Derek Hill. We recorded. Uh, it was Arsenal versus Havoc. Right. Havoc's a dick. Havoc. And no, Havoc is great. I think those might have been the only matches we recorded. Yeah, because we were going to record the main event. but And we'll have more on that next week. Yeah. So, that's and that being said, what's that? I said that's called a cliffhanger. That's right. <laughs> we're going to have Chris Raddock on again next week. Yes. Uh, we may have uh, Brooks here as well. Hopefully. We could have a four-person podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have interviews. The interviews are probably going to go up, right? Yes, the interviews are going to be uh, after this show. Okay. We're going to have the interview. We're going to have both interviews at the end of this show, so stay tuned for that. It's going to be an interview with Sports Kill Illustrated, which is Chris Braddock and his dick of a coach, Zach Cooper. Oh. I don't even know why that guy. I don't know why uh, Chris. I, I'm all lost for words. I don't like that guy. Just the thought of him just, just infuriates me. Whew. Okay. He didn't have a bit of an attitude. All right, I'm okay. <laughs> I'll do a much better interview with Colonel Brute of Entertainment One Pro Wrestling. You, we've talked about them before. We're going to be working with them in the future. Uh, that Colonel's great. Oh, Can't yeah. Can't wait to work with him. And yeah. those will be at the end of this podcast. Oh, and a little secret that I was I meant to sneak in on our commentary. Um, but the Colonel... He has a new client. Yeah, he pulled me aside and told me. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is news to me right now. Yeah, I know, because I was going to break it to you all while we were commentating. Okay. But I didn't get to, and you'll find out why later. But yeah, the colonel, pull, colonel pulled me aside. You're not going to like it. Because now he's got Havoc as his new champion. God he's going to be damn pushing it. Havoc. Havoc's going to get his payday. Why? Why have it? Uh, mm, I'm getting hot again. Because Havoc is a bad. Mm. I'd put money on Havoc. You can find us oh, on the futurevillains.com. What? I just feel bad for uh, Dario Bengali. I think he said his name wrong. Dario Bengala. A uh, Dario Bengali. I think it's golly. I think I'm not. I think I wrote it down wrong in the book. All right, then that explains <laughs> that. You can find us on the Few True Villains website. That's Few True Villains. You can also find us on the Twitter, on the Facebook. You can find me at Best in the Realm. On the Book of Faces. <laughs> on the Book of Faces, as Dalton Castle would say. Um, yeah, I'm at Best in the Realm on Twitter. I'm Best in the Realm Gaming on Facebook. I'm also Best in the Realm on YouTube. And. Best of the Realm, so twitch.tv slash best in the realm. I stream a few times a week with Bearded Gaming Entertainment of the Future Villains. You are on Twitter. Uh, Bryman25 on Twitter, Bryman1138 on Instagram, and Nerdy Bryman on YouTube. 
also on the Few True Villains website. Yep, and just look up Few True Villains on YouTube. And look up Wrestling Has a Tomorrow on YouTube, and you will find videos from the show and others. Yes, and they're on Facebook, uh, Wrestling Has a Tomorrow. So thanks for joining us for this episode, guys. We will have Chris Braddock and hopefully Coach Brooks next week. Coach Brooks, not Coach Cooper, because fuck that guy. Huh? Good. Good. I want Coach Cooper back on the no. show. No. Um, Madigan, let's stop. So much into the electronics, let me tell you, young man. Gorilla wannabe. What? This is Colonel Brute from what? Entertainment One Wrestling? Entertainment One We've Wrestling. We've talked about them before. That's right, you have. No, they're, they're pretty good. Yeah, okay, pretty <laughs> good. Let me tell you something. We're more than pretty good because we are the home of the champions. Entertainment One is the place to be if you want to be a champion. And let Colonel Brute manage you all the way to the top. When's your next show, though? Our next show will be May 26, Port Richie. At the Regency Park Center. It's going to be a beautiful time. Because my champion, Preston Kane, the Entertainment One Wrestling Champion, will be in the house. Sounds like a good time. Yeah, we got a great show. We got, got to go on the Facebook. You got to get on the Facebook. You got to look, okay? Because it will be a payday if you don't. Now, Colonel, I got a question for you, and I'm going to be asking other people this question. Between the golden era, the attitude era, wrestling today is so incredible. And to me, it's better than it ever has been. Does wrestling have a tomorrow? Yeah, it certainly does have a tomorrow, and it's right here tonight. I think you'll be putting this on the air later on. That's why the colonel has come here. To look at the young talent, to see the champions in the making. That's why the colonel's in the house. I don't waste my time on losers. Uh, if you could manage anyone here that's wrestling tonight, who do you think that might be? That's a tough question because I got to look over the talent first, you see, and I got to see who would be the one that would be under the tutelage oh, of Colonel Brook. Is that what you're doing here tonight? Are you scouting? I am scouting, but Ooh. you are to keep quiet about yes, it. Yes, sir. Colonel Brook is always around watching, and Colonel Brook brings in and gives these stars big paydays. Look at the people I've had in the past. Bobby Bone, Crusher Smith, Preston King, and the other guy, I fired at Howard. <laughs> I fired I him. him. I fired him and it named the Homer Sasa Screwjob. All thanks right. for having, or thanks for having us on your podcast. I don't know where I am. That's right, <laughs> and you gentlemen are great people, along with everybody else in this building. Come out, support local entertainment, wrestling, any brand. Yeah, thanks for coming on the, the Future Heels podcast, Colonel. God we'll bless talk you. And we'll God. see you soon, at Entertainment. I'll give you a payday. Simmer down. Hey, I'm old. I'm beat down. That's why you do all the cool shit, and I do all the boring stuff. Fine. Hey, you get paid more than I do anyway. I deserve it more. I don't get paid. You just sit on your ass because I'm not even a real coach. <laughs> See, that's why Brooke should have been. Oh, have we started? <laughs> we have started. <laughs> Whatever, just Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Future Hills Podcast. My name is Jacob Best. I am joined today by Brian. Brian, Brian Man Peacock. What did you just call yourself? <laughs> Last name? Peacock. Oh my god. What are you pointing at me for? Because I wanted you to say your pop. name. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mr. I've been in radio. Yeah, I've been in radio three years. I've been in wrestling for several other years. I'm a football coach. My name is Zach Cooper. Don't, t- don't tell me what to do. You and I'm the talent, year. the never-ending arsenal, Chris Brad. Who you're all and familiar with. My He's host. over here telling me what to do, man. Like, he paid me for this interview. I didn't pay him to be on his studio. You were paid? Hey, you weren't hey. paid? Okay, so anyway, so we're here on the Wrestling as a Tomorrow show. What is left to give? Well, that's what, the so that's the question. What's left to give, guys? What's left to give is I, myself, and my coach Zach Cooper yeah. are gonna put Drake Xavier and Ace Alexander both through tables, and they won't be able to walk after I'm done with them. Now I gotta tell you something. I'm an Ace Alexander fan, so I don't necessarily want you to do that. I don't care. Well, I, why, do I, why do I care? He's he's a Red Sox. I'm a Yankee. Oh. I, I don't want. 
I don't care. I don't want him to walk. I don't want him to have kids. I don't want him to ever live and breathe and walk every day because he's that much of a menace to society. Wow. That went a lot farther than I thought it would. <laughs> this just right. got real. So, uh, stables, ladders, and chairs match. Just... Yeah. Glad you read the poster. Great, thanks. Something, yeah, I did read I the poster. Oh. Right, we're in a tables, uh, ladders, and chairs match now. Don't yeah, just you just keep eating your Wendy's chicken sandwich. I don't have Wendy's. Talk. It's Arby's. All right, listen. So listen, tonight. All right. You see, we're in tables, ladders, and chairs. This is something. Those kind of hardcore things. Yeah, these are something. Those matches are matches that he and I are very familiar with. You see, think about our move set. It's all stupid. It's Everything all we dumb. do is stupid. Everything. So you think me landing on a ladder? You think me? getting hit in the head with a chair. I've had 11 concussions, bro. You think anything like that's going to bother me? I don't feel anything. The only thing I feel is uh, my girlfriend. Sorry, my bad. Take it easy. Something you guys don't know about. I'll tell you something that you don't know. You're probably going to lose to Ace Alexander tonight, to be honest. Am I? Lose? Lose. 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 They got lucky the first what show. Very, very, very yeah. lucky. And then in the triple threat where I didn't have the coach with me, and we couldn't we couldn't we couldn't go over plays. We couldn't go over plays. We couldn't do anything. Could you even set him a breakdown? I am sorry. I just can't. I don't know what's going on right now. All I know is that someone just hit someone in the dick. Yeah, that didn't look like fun. Other than that, another thing I know is that Ace Alexander and Drake Xavier are not coming out on top. We have went over plays. We have watched video. We have scouting reports. We are ready. Is that why there's so many whiteboards here? No. That's because of other personal there's a lot of white professional stuff that I can't discuss at this moment All right. in time. So what is your tag team name? Because I do really like that. Sports Killistrate. That is a pretty good name. Because we kill bitches. Yeah? I, we win. That's that's really We don't lose. Like you said, they got lucky. Lucky. You still okay? lost. Every fat guy like you gets lucky every once in a while. Yeah? Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So guess what? Tonight... It's going to be way different. 180 degrees, completely different. You wonder why? You wonder why? Because he has, does a 180 in his finisher. Right? No, no. <laughs> I think he's trying to say they're going to get lucky tonight. I get lucky every day. I have a Puerto Rican girlfriend. She Are you kidding me? I'm a professional athlete. All I do is get ass. By my wife, not anyone else. I was just saying, what's <laughs> happening in the ring? I, I don't know that this is the show I signed up for. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Well, that's, this that's, that's, this is our first that's the quote-unquote show, air quotes for people listening, All right. that me and Zach Cooper live every single day. After the show. After the show. Okay, thank God. All right, so this is awkward. We're going to go ahead and end it and get to the real interviews. <laughs> you guys, you're done, right? Well, listen, you need to no, plug anything? Here's, 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 here's the deal. Sorry, here's, the yeah. deal. Here's, the, here's the deal. Fine. We've talked to Chris Berman. We've talked to Stuart A. Scott. We can do a real interview, so have that. Alright. Ace!